Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Daniel Mendez. I'm a member of the VTC committee and co-host of the workshop. Uh, Saigon South International School is honored to be hosting the ninth annual Vietnam Tech Conference in collaboration with Eunice Hanoi. It is also our honor on behalf of the VTC committee to introduce you to Josh Kern who will talk to us about augmented reality and animation, the future of art in the upcoming workshop. Josh is in his 15th year of teaching visual arts and design at Room Rudy International School in Bangkok. He enjoys being in an industry that encourages nonstop creation. Lately, he has been learning as much as he can about computer 3D modeling and animation. Welcome, Josh Kern. Thank you, thank you. All, All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you for that sweet introduction. And, uh, and Daniel, everyone has been doing just an awesome job on your guys' end, getting things set up for us. Um, okay. And as you pass this back to me, there we go. All right, cool. Hopefully you're seeing... Um, to play here you guys gotta please there we go cool um all right augmented reality and animation you had to pardon my zoom skills there we've been fortunate here in thailand to not really be in um online learning and so i i take that as a <laughs> as a good thing that my zoom skills are, are weak these days and i feel like every time i come on here they've added some new cool feature to it Anyhow, welcome to augmented reality and animation. We could really go into about 14 different side workshops here talking about animation, what tools are really, really awesome and free and intuitive and easy for you to use inside your classroom. And then we can then extend beyond that to some more industry uh, tools. And um, then we can just talk about augmented reality, its uses, uses in industry, uses in your classroom. Um, so there's lots to share. So I'm going to go through a pretty comprehensive uh, lesson here on kind of all of that. And we're going to do this really, really fast. So I'm going to be sharing a few screens, jumping around from one keynote slide presentation to another. I have things prepared for you, like any good cooking show does. All of the ingredients are already measured out. and They're just kind of dumping them in and mixing them. And so I'm hoping that it's going to go smoothly for us together. I also have my phone tethered to my computer, so I'll be shifting periodically to the phone so you can actually see the screen on my phone and we can look at some of the augmented reality stuff that the students have done since uh, last year and then also this year. A little bit about the animation that you're seeing here. This was created using Keynote, which is a free uh, slide deck presentation built by Apple. And much of what we, we produce is actually and most of what I'm gonna share with you today, about 95% of it was created using Apple's Keynote. And that's what I'm gonna be demonstrating with you today. Uh, the cool thing about this is, uh, was my quarantine mustache almost a year ago when we went into quarantine, we, uh, what you do is you grow a mustache, right? And that's the most hideous thing in the world. Needless to say, when it was time to shave it off after about five months of this hideousness, of course you have to make a stop motion animation and um, it's about 80 images and I just plug them right into Keynote. It just literally filed, drop all of them in there and I then exported this as an animated GIF, which I'll share with you today. So you can do uh, stop motion animation with photography using some of the tools I'll share with you today. Um, all right, so imagine yourself walking through a gallery at perhaps your school and you, you notice that all of the artwork is empty. It's white pieces of paper. And then all of a sudden you are then asked to hold up your device and then you point it at the artwork and then voila, it comes to life similar to what you're seeing right here. This is an IB contour line self-portrait project. I like it when that person walks by, it just kind of lets you know that this is uh, you know, augmenting and uh, in a real space in real time. And this was an IB contour, IB art contour line drawing. And we thought, well, let's record. And this is a classic project that's done in the art room. We thought, well, why don't we use a device like an iPad? We do the same project on paper. We transfer that to the iPad. And then we do a screen record as you trace your pencil or even finger across the 
a device and then record it. And then we'll use that as the animation. And so this was our augmented reality animation project concerning this. I wanna make a little note here concerning the contour line project. I wanted to make a little note here, looking at the QR code right here, because this is, tends to be a, a big question that um, teachers like yourself ask, does that have to be available? Does it, uh, how does this work exactly? And there's a few ways that we can do it and I'll answer those questions in depth later on, especially as you gain a little bit more of understanding. But I wanted that to be a, a visual there so you can kind of see how that, um, if you were to have something in, in a gallery. Uh, how that would work for you, all right? And you don't always have to have it visible, and that's what we'll talk about later as we learn a little bit more about this, okay? Um, this journey uh, really began with the yearbook and prior to that actual animation. For me, it began with the yearbook. And this is the head of school, the former head of school, Mr. Dan Smith at Rum Broody, and this is our yearbook from last year. And he wrote a nice message for us, you can see right there, but he also, shared a funny joke with us and there's audio to this. It's not playing during this presentation, um, but he, uh, we're, we're bringing our yearbook to life and um, it, it feels like the future. And I guess we're living in the future right now. Augmented reality isn't something that's coming to us. It's already here. You're using it, whether you know it or not, and your students are for sure using it, whether they know it or, uh, or not. And we'll, uh, We'll expand on those ideas where you can be like, oh yeah, that is augmented reality. Um, and so last year was my first year at Rome Rudy International School. And as a design teacher, tech, uh, digital art teacher and studio art teacher, when you're the new teacher coming in, you're the one that gets the yearbook. And it also kind of made sense because I have a background in that, uh, that field. And I thought, well, if I'm gonna do this, let's do something different. And uh, at that same time, I was starting to come across augmented reality and I was asking a lot of questions, literally, what is this? How does this work? My brain was manufacturing some ideas in my mind's eye of, can this work? I have some ideas for our yearbook. And then it was just a slow process of piecing it together. So my intentions are to take that long process for me and condense it and kind of crunch it in here to really spin you around and confuse the heck out of you and hopefully prompt some ideas for you. Let's get this. Oh, my cursor's lost. Trying to change this. Okay. All right. Well, if my cursor does come back, I'm hoping. I'm actually just going to. Let's do that. Let's do that. Get back to play. All right part of me bouncing around this presentation here. So I'm gonna, this is just the visual here to show you how this presentation is gonna be broken up. I'm gonna talk about resources and industry, uh, how AR is actually being used. Then I'll go into an actual superficial, very, very quick like um, tutorial on how to create an animation using Keynote. I'm not one of the million ways of doing this literally. And just to connect some dots and then I'll move in at the very end, I'm gonna share lots of student work that is cross cur curricular examples that I've been able to do with my art class, of course. I dipped down into a fifth grade class and then some middle school um, e English classes and then high school math and social study classes. And so I'll share the artwork with you as well as their animation. All right, so. There's a lot of things that you can use to create animation. Here's a list of the tools that are at least in my back pocket and inside my classroom. Some of them are um, native to just the iPad or they are on both. For example, Adobe Fresco is an awesome, awesome, awesome um, drawing app. And you can actually do a little bit of a GIF animation on that and that's on the iPad and that's 100% free. Not all of these are free though. Adobe Rush is free. Uh, but what I want to just point out is this can get really scary. It's like, oh, we don't have time to learn all of these complex softwares. And you're right, you don't. In order to fully teach Photoshop or Lightroom for that matter, you really need to have a class that just highlights that. So that would be digital photography. So how can we break this down for you and for you teachers who aren't in the art room where this is something that you want to embed into a fifth grade 
social studies unit or even in a middle school social studies unit, how can we maximize your time? So I've narrowed this down to a list of free tools right here. And about 98% of what you're gonna see today was created just with these tools. I do have inside the chat, and I'll have to speak with Daniel after this to make sure that I did this correctly, but I do have in the chat for my presentation on the WOVA app or the Whova app, um, I just put in there some links to some tutorials. I have, uh, as well as a curated list. Uh, it's just a Google sheet that I've shared of all, a lot of the tools that I find fascinating a list if they're free or not free. And then I've also rated them if they, their level of difficulty, one being really easy to use, five being like, well, you gotta dedicate some time to it. And all of these are 100% free that you see there. Today, and most of what I do with the students is actually just narrow down to two. So now we're gonna really simplify this and answer that question, is this for me? Can I do this with, with my own students? And I think the answer is yes. All you need is a slide deck, present presenter. Apple Keynote is the one that I use, but I know you can do this on Google Slides and I'm almost certain you can do this on Microsoft PowerPoint. You just need some export options where you can export this as an animated GIF or perhaps a movie. And we're gonna use the slide deck to create some sort of stop motion animation. And then iChat Creator, the one that you're looking at on, uh, on the right there is the device that we use to create the augmented reality. And you need to have that downloaded into two places. It needs to be on your desktop. That's where you do the backend coding. It's not, it's just really drag and drop. You're just uploading your animation and then your trigger image in there. And that's what creates uh, the magic. Uh, through iJack and it's iJackCreator.com or if you just Google iJack Creator, it will take you right there. They've got a lot of cool resources in there to get you acquainted with it. Lots of do it yourselves and then uh, tips for making uh, great animations for augmented reality. The other place you need to have it is also downloaded the application on a viewing device like your iPhone or just your phone for that matter. And that's what we use to uh, augment the artwork. We'll hold the device up and it will go through your camera and then the, um, the phone will then interpret, hey, I see this, this picture here, I need to now play this animation. And that goes back to the QR code um, uh, and downloading the information onto your phone prior so your phone knows, hey, when I do see this, um, it's time to play that animation. And I'm gonna model that for you. That's kind of why I was waiting to really talk about the QR code, does it need to be visible, et cetera. Once I, I'll model that directly for you verbatim. So just another reminder, the huge list of tools is in the chat right now, uh, along with two tutorials, um, one of which you'll view today, but a little bit more in depth. Today's superficial. And then another tutorial, which I won't share today, uh, but I explain how to use Adobe Rush, which is a free uh, movie edit editing software. And you can, uh, it will teach you how to do the yearbook animation that I shared with you um, just a moments ago. All right, so this is um, something from industry. This is a New Yorker magazine. I'm gonna share these next few slides are gonna be about industry. This is actually what prompted my ideas when I was starting to become the yearbook teacher. This is. Uh, I saw this on a wonderful docu-series called Abstract, and this is episode one, season one, Christoph Niemann, ne and he's a German artist, and he's been on The New Yorker a few times, and I saw this, I was like, whoa, this is cool, what is that? I want to do that for the yearbook, and, and so then, well, this is what we did, so in that same... <laughs> Didn't mean to scare you there. Okay, I did want to have that that playing, and that's the only one that does have the uh, sound on. I forgot that I left that on. It scared me. Uh, this was our yearbook from last year. We did uh, animation on the front cover. This is something that I built as I was testing this out, and um, now that's what the expectation is set moving forward at our school. Uh, is animating the cover. Anyway, this idea came from Christoph Niemann's idea with the New Yorker, and then we tied this to the yearbook. And so this was the moment um, 
that got us started, at least got me started in animation and augmented reality. I have a little bit of a background in animation. So I built this animation in After Effects, which is industry standard motion graphics software. And that is not a place to start unless uh, you have you have time and commitment, nor is that a place for you to start with your students. It's, a, it's extremely complex. However, um, what that has done for my classes, particularly in the yearbook classes, as I taught everybody what I'm gonna teach you today, the simple ways to create animation just using Keynote slide deck, then it got the students asking more questions and saying things like, uh, I want to do that. And then saying, I'm going to teach myself how to do that. So it turns from questions into statements into action statements. And so they've been learning and teaching themselves uh, after effects to create animations. This year, um, the thing that what happened for the yearbook class is literally the size of the class is quadrupled. And I almost have too many kids in yearbook. So then what I created is not only a monster, but I created an animation monster. So this year's yearbook, some students are creating it uh, traditionally as you would expect a yearbook would be created. And then some of them are just solely responsible for animation. And so we've narrowed it down to one student actually now, they had their idea selected to be the animation for the front cover of the yearbook. So we've had this like third or fourth dimension, if you will, uh, for our yearbook class and it's awesome. It's just got so much buy-in and then we've just changed the way um, we'll be, be using our yearbooks. They'll almost be like interfaces now. Um, I forgot I have to click, there we go. So augmented reality in industry, how are we already, uh, we're already using this. This is, this is already here. This is just me with a Snapchat filter on. Basically what Snapchat does is it holds up to your face, it finds the contours of your face, and then it seamlessly lays their own animation filters on it so it works. This is kind of a live action augmented reality. And they don't need a QR code because all of their stuff is theirs inside their app. And so that would be the one only way that you could really get rid of the QR code is if you created your own app to house all of the uh, animations and whatnot. So rather than people downloading the information on the QR code, they would actually have to just download your app. So there's still some sort of download process. Anyhow, you're already, if you're using Snapchat filters, something similar to this, you're using augmented reality. Warby Parker is a glasses, um, you can order glasses and frames uh, online and you can actually, through the same software, you can try on glasses before you purchase them. So it looks at the contours of your face and then you can try them on, see how you might look in this frame versus, well, that frame, right? Uh, Vuforia is a company that you can see the headwear that he's using. You can see that that was teaching him how to uh, find the particular thing that he needed to use a wrench for. This young lady is, you know, moving around through an interface that's in front of her that she's seeing on a screen and then it's pinpointing which wires she needs to cut. And this is view for Vuforia. He's working on some sort of engine there. And so this is something that they are creating for anyone. You hire them and they come and build these training interfaces for um, anyone who hires them. I can see something like this in the future where if you want to learn how to play the piano, for example, uh, I'm sure there's going to be something, uh, if it's not there already, that's a great idea. Anybody who's uh, familiar with coding, you know, get on that. Um, learning how to play the piano using augmented reality, where to place your fingers. And then also, you know, think about like med school. Yeah, I mean, it might be kind of scary um, doing this, learning how to, you know, do open heart surgery for the first time using augmented reality. But, I'm, you know, you get my idea of training cycles, right? Um, Way Ray or Wave Ray is working on the same idea, but for windshields. And so you could imagine if you're driving, you'll have on your screen, it can tell you how fast you're going, tell you about hazards. I mean, with the self-driving car already, it, it, it feels like this is already here. They're just missing this visual component, which is on the windshield. And even if you don't have a self-driving car, I mean, who does? You, you have this map who, that gives you directions and it's in your pocket and it's called Google Maps or Apple Maps, whatever you use. And you can see this is just a screenshot 
of my phone. I find it really remarkable coming from Bangkok that all of those lines to get around the city are green because that never happens. I must have taken that screenshot at midnight. Uh, but think if you were to pair this technology that you have on your phone and directions with your windshield and rather it, it talk about hands-free, right? You can, it will tell you which direction you need to go. So you don't really need to look at the screen. You just look at your windshield. Um, so I find that really fascinating. Augmented reality, it's not coming to us. It's already here. 19 crimes. This is just a fun factor with uh, a wine bottle. They have several... They might be 19, but they have inmates on their wine bottles and through their application, you can download their app and each one of these inmates has a story. And I, I might be mistaken, but I do think that they are true stories about each one of these inmates. They are real photos and they share that story. Um, and this is something that can easily be done uh, using some Adobe softwares. Can't even think. I think it's animate. I can't remember. But same idea. Your phone you, in in inside my Apple phone, my my bit emoji can come to life. And you know, if I did a screen record, I could do something similar to this. When I look at this one, though, the main thing I wanted to illustrate and why I have this one here is I think of like books and students in your classroom doing using the book cover as a trigger image. And so when people or students come over and hold their phone to augment um, the book cover. It could be a student doing something similar to this and just give, maybe doing a character analysis, but rather than typing it up, they could type it up, read the script and then share it this way. And so when we walk into a, a gallery, we could see all of these book covers and then um, parents and students and teachers could view the book cover and then listen to uh, a student talk about um, a, a character analysis, maybe it's a, a book report. Um, and there are free tools out there to do things similar to this. You could type in like a, a Harry Potter for lack of a better example, and it moves around. Um, it does a screen capture of uh, your, your face and, and just, it, you've seen these things through Snapchat and, and on your phone. So it's not that these things are coming to us, it's already here. Uh, and even if you aren't doing something similar to this anim animation, and it seems a little bit scary, even just having um, some stop motion animation, which I'll share with you today, or even just re recording a student's face in there and putting it in there could be one thing that you could do. Ikea, um, you can scan the contours of your floor, go shopping for some furniture. I want to see if this yellow chair fits in my room nicely. Oh, yep, I think it does. We'll place it in there. And I love this guy's face right there. He's like, whoa, what just happened? All right. Um, but uh, Anna, Amazon is already doing things like this. They, they know what you want before you know you want it. And um, I've started noticing some things where you can then augment things like this and place it into your house, even through Amazon. So if you feel like you're being followed by Amazon, it's only going to get a little bit more freaky uh, using things like this here. Uh, and this will be the last thing I wanted to share with you concerning these videos, and then we'll jump right into some student examples, and then I'll model a demonstration. But this is Marty McFly from Back to the Future 2, uh, 1989. Uh, so roll back, what, almost 40 years or 40 years ago, is that right? 30 years ago. Uh, the creators of this could already foresee, you know, something similar like, let's say, holograms or virtual reality or augmented reality. And in 1989, if, if they could be thinking this up and dreaming it up, I mean, it's two, it's 2021 right now, what else can we dream up? And I just feel like, you know, I keep this to be the third time you've heard me say this, augmented reality is not coming to us, it's already here. Uh, and for me and my students in my class, we've recognized that. And so now we're starting to be dreamers, just like the creators of Back to the Future 2 here. What else can we do with this? What, where can we push this? All right, I'm going to shift to my phone. And so I'm going to exit this and pull up the QuickTime player. And I'm going to, this will be a great time for me to introduce the iJack app. Okay, and uh, it looks like I'm still screen sharing appropriately. Okay, so you can see the iJack app just right here. I'm gonna open it up. Let's talk about the interface. The main thing that you wanna be paying attention to, at least for today and for you moving forward, this is the thing that you use, the bottom left icon. 
to um, view the process and, and um, well, I'll just jump into it. I'll open it up there. So I pushed the bottom left one here. And so here's my screen. Here's some of the artwork that I'm gonna share with you today. Uh, and let's bring this to life. So I will now hit the bottom left icon. And this is gonna take me into some of the assets that I already have downloaded into my phone. So I don't need to view the QR code. And again, I'll explain the view QR code when we get to that uh, animation together. So I'm gonna trigger or turn on rather these op art examples here, and then I'll hit dismiss and you'll see this one come to life. So this is an op art project that I've done for years in just art one. And I thought that this would be fitting after I learned about augmented reality and applying it towards the yearbook. I thought, wow, this could really work with my op art class. And so what I'm gonna share with you today, uh, the lesson on how I explained it, uh, this project here helped me drum that up. And so we used Keynote and Google Slides to create these animations. There's another one. So some of these have sound. Um, this next one actually has sound here. Not sure if you can hear it or not. Not really relevant, right? Okay, and I'll hit the bottom left icon to then close these ones here. And those are, those are, Uh, things that students made. And that was the first thing that we had done. And so they look really, really awesome and I love them, um, but we've just gotten bigger and better. I'm gonna share with you the Optimus Tr uh, Prime one right here. In fact, I'll show you the artwork first. So here's the artwork. Uh, I, this is just acrylic paint on a little board here. And then you can also see the, uh, some of their, actually that's not relevant, so I'll skip that. But let's bring this one to life. So I'll turn this one on. And this is what we're gonna to create today here in just a moment. So the phone recognizes the image uh, similar like the QR code would. It says, oh, hey, I need to now run this animation. So let's do that together. So I'll minimize that. And I'm gonna pull up. Hopefully I've got these all in order ready for you. Um, and I'm a little bit apprehensive. You know what, I'll do, I'll do uh, some questions at the end, but you can start typing them in the chat right now just to make sure that those aren't lost, okay? All right, so what do we need to, what do we need to, to run this? We need two things to run this. I got a little bit ahead of myself here. You need two things to run this. And since I'm gonna to bounce to the other keynote, I won't uh, fully present this. You need a trigger image and an animation. And so there's that mustache gif, uh, that hideous must, mustache uh, gif that I played with you at the beginning. And so I actually gave this to my wife as an anniversary present. And it's a picture of me, it's in a frame. And so when she holds her uh, phone up to the image of me, then the animation will then play. Similar as what you just saw in the previous student examples. And so if you wanna think about this, um, yes, the trigger image acts like a QR code, but it's not that ugly mess of a QR code. It's aesthetically pleasing artwork. Okay, so here we go. Let's make that transformer together. Boom. So in order to do this, you need to first create your artwork and then you need to create your animation. So I've created the artwork here and I have, I have rulers here to illustrate that we need to, to be pretty precise on measuring the size of this. And so I deal with inches. And so this measures out to be 11 inches to 15 and a half inches. And for Apple Keynote, I'm gonna set my slide presentation deck to match up exactly to this artwork right here. They don't use inches, they don't use the metric system, they use something familiar to graphic design artists and it's PTS or points. And so you just have to do a simple Google conversion of inches to points, meters to points, centimeters to points, et cetera. And so I'm gonna create my slide deck here to be 792 by 1116. And how I do that, move that out of the way, 
go to the document here. And again, this is all superficial and fast. I do have a link for a more in-depth, slow tutorial in the chat for my particular presentation. I'll go to the slide size here. Go to custom size. 792 is the width. 792. And then 1116 is the height and I'll hit okay. So you can almost already see that how my artwork's gonna fit inside there. I'll zoom out so you can see this a bit better. Uh, I don't actually need this slide anymore. So let's get, I'll just delete it and get to my artwork. And so I just took a picture of my artwork. Here's the JPEG of that image. And you can see the aspect ratio is pretty darn close to being perfect. Maybe if I move that over a little bit and I've got that off to the side, but uh, whatever. All right, so here's my image and I'm going to copy and paste this a couple times so I have this in here. Now I'm going to only do part of it because I have another slide deck prepared uh, where it's fully complete. So I'm just going to walk you through one of the tools here and I just wanted to share with Keynote with you on how awesome I think it is. Keynote, um, and hopefully this will prompt you to do a little bit more research on what you can do with Keynote. Keynote is awesome if you want to create artwork, uh, vector-based artwork, graphic artwork, uh, it is super duper cool. Adobe Illustrator is the industry standard or even in design in creating graphics, logos, et cetera, for graphic artists. And Keynote actually is, and that's a very complex software to use. And I would never at, um, have my students in art try and pick up on the interface to learn to create on that. And so I have actually found over the my journey in this, the last year and a half, Keynote can do a lot of what basically I need to do in Illustrator in this introductory level. The interface is extremely easy to use. And so I'm a real big advocate for using this to create artwork. You can create um, vector or just you know, vector based uh, portraits of, of someone. You can do something similar to painting uh, on this. You can then use Kino on your device and use the pencil, the Apple Pencil. Um, or any other device that has something similar to it. And then it will show up in your presentation on your desktop. It's just really, really remarkable. So I'm gonna show two things, two of my favorite things, and this is enough to get you started on this. The other thing too is then we can export this out and do some motion graphics. And that to me is just huge. All inside Keynote, that's free, it's friendly, and it doesn't require a lot from the, to teach the students. In fact, they already really know how to navigate their way around it. So enough about this. Google Slide does a lot of this as well, just a different roundabout way of doing it, okay? Uh, and I haven't even dabbled with Microsoft PowerPoint on it, but I'm sure they're also awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna to, I'm gonna trace this shape. And the way that I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go to the shapes tool and the pen tool right here that I'm highlighting is the main thing that I want to illustrate to you. The pen tool, I haven't seen in any, any other the slide deck uh, companies, but I can click here and I can create this shape and I'm just clicking. Nothing new neat about this quite yet. Um, and I'm just gonna close that shape. Let's go ahead and fill in this shape. Go ahead and do that blue. And you'll notice that it doesn't really fit quite um, well, perfect yet. So let's go ahead and do that. This is the part that I really love about this. The pen tool is in a lot of drawing softwares, really famously used in Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, um, and a lot of other things. But what this does is it allows us to create this organic edge and, and Keynote was brilliant by including the pen tool in here. Their pen tool, another plug is just so easy to use, remarkably easy to use. I can click this to make this a little bit more organic um, to really fit. And I, I'm not, um, it, you can see how that, that circle is just comes up. I don't have to like hit anything, it just comes up. And so I can really add as many of these as I want or subtract them. And so you can start to see how vector-based artwork is created in this simplified form on Keynote. So it's just awesome. In fact, if you are teaching a graphic design class, this might be a really good way to, to start. Um, so you're not spending a lot of time learning complex interfaces of let's say Illustrator. All right, the other tool I wanna share with you is uh, I'm gonna make another shape and then I'm gonna cut the, a hole in here. And this is something that is used a lot along with the pen tool. Uh, it's how shapes interact with each other. And I use this all the time in Adobe Illustrator. So I need that to quit getting in my way. So I'm gonna create a new shape 
So I'll grab my pen tool. I kind of got ahead of myself there. Let's move that to the side. Or I could just change the transparency of it. Okay, now we'll grab the pen tool and cut a hole or uh, create another shape there. We can fill this up with this pink so it's contrasting. Click off that. And so now I'll click this and then this and uh, we'll go to arrange. And I can use these to unite them, intersect them. I want to subtract, I want to cut a hole out of the middle. And that right there, that whole uh, arrangement of tools is something that I use all of the time when I'm creating in Adobe Illustrator. And so to have that available for us inside um, Keynote is to me is just remarkable. So there we go. Apparently I can't talk and do this at the same time. Okay, so that's really it. Uh, I'll then reproduce that for all of these shapes and I'm not gonna take the time to do that now and then I'll share with you the stop motion animation. So I'm gonna undo all of these. Actually, I can do that later. And then I'll bring up the other one. So this one I already have done. So let's get to it. I'll explain what I had done there. And so they, I drew all the shapes and then after you have all of the shapes drawn, all right, you'll then, I'll literally select this slide, I'll hit copy and then paste, and I have a new slide right here. And then you just go through each one of these and you change the color, change the color, change. Uh, there's nothing really organized in what I'm doing other than just doing it for you. All right, and then you do that down to here and down to here and down to here. And I have 200, 103 slides. And so many of you are thinking, whoa, you have to do that 103 times? The answer is no. It depends on what you're doing for animation. If you are doing something like a frame by frame animation like the animators do for let's say Disney, then yes, you would need to do it slide, uh, slide by slide, frame by frame. And that's how that's done. For us, I did about five or seven of these where I took it and then I copied and pasted that slide and then change the colors, copied and pasted that, change the colors, and you get the idea. So when I have about seven of these or so, I then highlight all of these, and then I command and then copy them. And then I copy them and copy them and copy them. And so when I hold my down arrow, when I copy enough, then I'll have enough for an animation. And so I use this tutorial to teach teachers like yourself and even students as young as fifth grade. I explain this whole process with them. They did it with me, mind you, so I'm just, telling you how to do it. This is a hands-on workshop. I can do this with grade five. I can do it in one hour together where they've actually created something with me and then we can augment it. And so I use this um, transformer head. The reason why I use the transformer head is because the basic polygon shapes and then you have a few organic curves which allows us to, to then teach a little bit about the pen tool and how you can bend the line. But that's the real reason why I chose the Optimus Prime. And so you can see the stop motion animation. Let me pull this over here. This is just a, another, yeah, you know, I have the shapes drawn here and then I just have this, this covering it up. And so as I go down, I'm just revealing that one, revealing that one, revealing that one. And that's how the animation for me is working. And then now you can see that so on and so forth. All right, so I have roughly 102, I have 108 slides and I have several versions of this up because I want this to show in the animation for a longer period of time. So one through 108, let's export this as an animated GIF. So this is what I really love about Keynote, the export options as well. So when I go to file and export, I can ex export this as a movie um, but this animated GIF is what I want. And I actually am not gonna animate or export this because I have this already prepared. But this is why you heard me vocalizing saying how many slides I have. So from one to one, zero, eight. And so that's what I want to be animated. I want it to be large or even extra large. This is the resolution and, and the detail in it. It's not gonna make it any bigger or any smaller because remember we already set that size 
to match the size of my artwork that I shared with you. The frame rate is important. This is the frames per second, and it's going to build this. So in between each one of these slides, it's going to then add another 24 frames in between each one, and then it plays really, 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 really fast. How fast? I'll show you. But actually, I need to let you know that the frames per second, 24, it has to be 24, and that's stipulated by iJack Creator. Um, if you don't do it, I don't know what happens, but maybe their animation system inside the augmented reality doesn't run as smooth. This is uh, the auto advance. This is telling me how long my animation is going to be. So getting back to the time. And you're really dabbling between this one and this one. So if I go to zero seconds here, it's going to say all of those slides are going to play in one second. That's going to be way too fast for what we have. I've had some students have like 500 slides. And so then they might end up having maybe eight seconds right here. But I'm going to move this right here. And you can see this it's gonna give us 12 seconds of animation. And so when I hit next, it's gonna uh, ask me where I want to save it and uh, the name of it. And so I'm not gonna hit export because I don't wanna wait for it. I'm just gonna pretend I did hit that and it's now saved to my computer. So we just have an animated GIF. So now you can, make, if you didn't know how to make GIFs on uh, Google, or I apologize, you can do them on Google Slides, but on Keynote, now you know, and these are awesome. Uh, all right, so now let's introduce iJack Creator. So iJack Creator, you saw it on the phone as an app. This is what it looks like on, this, on the desktop. So you visit their site and you actually download it to your computer. And it's literally easy as one, two, three, plus three and a half if you wanna add sound to it. So after you've downloaded it, this is what the screen looks like. And you can see I have this docked down here because I use it quite frequently. And you literally just hit begin. And it's just asking for our artwork. So I have it as a JPEG, and so I'll do that. But you'll notice that it's asking for a PNG. So here's my trigger image, and I'll share that with you. There's that original trigger image of the artwork that I took a picture of. I'll hit open. Voila. PNG, if you're not familiar, this is allowing for transparent backgrounds. And so you can really get some things to lay flat uh, on our animation to lay Lay, if you have transparent background, all right, if that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, don't worry about it, but it's awesome because then it, the, the, the authenticity of the animation on top of something looks even more real. And so you can, uh, we have this as a GIF, but it, you can take your PNGs and, and make an animated sequence out of them, kind of the same idea, stop motion animation. Um, I'll grab that GIF, which I already have prepared for you right here. We'll hit open. And so that's now up. And this is where you can add sound, which we won't do right now. But I had, do have a transformer, you know, and they're like changing shape. They have that sound. And so I, I've embedded that in there. So we'll hit create. And I, you can name this. And I'm just going to give this a blah, blah, blah name. We'll hit start. And so now it's going to build all of the back end stuff for us. And I'm going to jump to my phone here while it's doing that so we can see how this process works. And one little special note that has to happen. You can see the QR code is, is right there. This is the only time you're going to see the QR code. Otherwise, I'll have to go back and then rebuild this, um, this script again. And so it's important to take a screenshot. So what I'll do is take just to drag out a screenshot of the artwork here so I know that this this QR code is tied to that image. And so when I have 50 students creating this, they'll turn in uh, ultimately this to me so then I can view their artwork. But they also wanna have, make sure that you have the QR code so when you need this to be accessible to anybody else who's viewing your artwork, that QR code needs to be available. So let's look now and pay attention to my screen here and I'm gonna open up the iJack creator. I'm gonna hit the bottom left button. And right now you're seeing my screen and I'm going to hold this immediately uh, over or in a moment over the QR code and you're going to see it's going to start to upload it. So if you're paying attention to my screen. Okay, now it's uploading the artwork. And now it's inside my phone. And so since my phone now has that in there, the this phone, this device never needs to see that QR code again. And so some things that we've done in our art exhibits is exhibitions, because we've done them inside our gallery and outside of our gallery, is uh, we've put the QR code next to the artwork and then students can uh, load it up themselves and then, then view, the, view the artwork and the animation. To me, that kind of ruins the intimacy uh, quite a bit. Um, sometimes there's not a way around it though. 
And then the other way, and I'll just play this over here. And so there, that's what you and I just built together. So you can see how it works and you can see how it lays pretty flat onto the artwork. And so that's why it's important to set the dimension uh, accurate in the, the slide deck. You need to do that as the first thing. Many of you are gonna start to do this, aren't gonna, you're gonna forget to set your slide deck to those dimensions. Um, and then you're gonna have to basically redo everything. So try and remember to do that first. Um, but back to the QR code, we've had galleries before where the, uh, we've had maybe like a set of 25 iPads on a shelf already preloaded with everyone's QR code and artwork and animation. And so that way the, the viewers can just walk through the gallery, grab a device, and then that way we've removed the QR code. So that's one way of doing it. The only other way to do it at this point is be a developer and code your own app with all of it kind of directly inside that server. All right, so we'll minimize that. Don't think that I need it though. And let's bring up some other ideas with the, uh, actually, I'm gonna share them here. Okay, all right, it's 15 minutes left. So I'm gonna buzz through this quite fast. This is a math example. And I guess we need to bring this back, don't we? 15, maybe even less. This is a math example. And you can see the artwork real fast. It's gonna then, actually, I have to turn it on. Okay, we'll turn that one on, turn that one on, turn that one on. I'll share a few of them with you. We'll turn that one on. Okay, and a few more. All right, so there's an equation. And this is something that I did in collaboration with a calculus class, kind of a roundabout story. This was just talking about slope. And for me, this would have been awesome as a student in high school, because I never understood why we are spending so much time talking about slope. But when I collaborated with a math teacher, and again, you know, I'm an older adult who understands learning now. Um, but when I was talking to a math teacher, I was like, tell me more about slope. That's very visual. Why, what's all the fuss behind slope? Why do we care so much? And he says, well, let me show you. Um, and so we did this in a three dimensional space. He created that little spin dial right there before this uh, airplane propeller animation. And that's at geogebra.com. He just plugged in this equation that you're seeing on the artwork there. And then we spun it around. We did a screen record of it. And then in my 3D modeling and animation class, I had a student then take that surface and then create that surface in the front end of an airplane propeller. And so that equation creates that aerodynamic there. And so for me, that was so much that connected the dots of, oh, okay. So that's why we learned slope. It's not just a two dimensional set of lines. It can then be created into this irregular surface that's three dimension. Okay, that makes more sense. And so we created this whole art gallery project with equations that were similar to this for the math group. So that's awesome. Segwaying this one, I'll let play a couple times as I'm talking over it, but you can see there were some initials in there they will bounce back. This was a middle school English project where we were talking about literacy uh, and literary figures that could be fictional or non-fictional. And the students had to take their initials, create the artwork, and then tie their initials into it, and then be talking about a literary figure. And um, she did something with this fox, which apparently in Japanese animation and culture, the fox is known to be a little bit uh, mischievous. And so when I asked her, are you mischievous? And she said, no, but she wishes that she was, and I thought that that was pretty funny. This is a really high level uh, animation. This was done in Krita, which is on that um, free list of tools uh, that I shared with you. This is probably one of my most favorite free drawing apps, as well as my most favorite free frame by frame animations. And she built this on there. Quite remarkable. When you have those high flyer advanced students, then you have that list of tools that you can refer to and say, well, here, what about this? Otherwise, for the most part, students will stick with the um, keynote. LK is another animation or initials. And right around October, I'll let you think about this literary figure before I share it with you. Right around October, this person had passed away. It's Ruth Bader, ben, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and that's her iconic um, collar piece. And so this was actually created in, in keynote, this animation. So the squish and the stretch rules, principles of animation were applied into this one. And that, that figure who is, 
uh, nonfiction character really struck a chord with that particular person. All right, jumping into a different uh, project. This is in a social studies class in the high school. Um, if you are familiar with Vox Media and Vox Animation, if you're not, go check them out on YouTube today. They're really great at sharing information in a very short and efficient way based on narration and animation and using things like these motion graphics for for to explain it. And so this project was tied to the English as well in the high school where they needed to come up. It was a social justice art project where they needed to become passionate about something and then research it with factual data. And they had to cite that. And then they needed to be thinking about how they're going to tell the story in, a, in, a, in an efficient way. And so we're using data here, numbers, motion graphics. This person actually had several um, more on this than what you're seeing here. And it got a little bit confusing because there was just too much and it was going fast. And so it's great that the students, not only do they get passionate about it because they want to share their ideas, um, they uh, want to share all their ideas. And so they need to be thinking about the traits of a storytelling uh, storyteller is when is too much too much? And you know how do I make it easy for the viewer to interpret the message that I'm trying to portray. And so she had to actually cut something from the script, which was hard on her, but in order to make it stronger, she had to, it's kind of like, think about revising your, or I'm talking about this so much is because thinking about making revisions to your paper to make it better, sometimes you need to cut stuff out. And so it was awesome. This is another one of those high flyer students who um, was using After Effects. And so she taught After Effects and we learned that part together. She just went, on to uh, Google search and then we did a flag animation tutorial which was really easy to use and and made that work together so she had no experience with After Effects pieced it together I've got three more I want to share with you and then uh, we can get to some questions here you can see I'm actually sharing a lot this one is something that we're doing for Amnesty International type the same project but uh, this student happened to be in Amnesty International, so she doesn't have the data for this one uh, to tell her story, kind of like a box animation does, where they are they're telling a story using data and imagery to do that motion graphics, and show, so hers will be tied into that. But I wanted to share that animation. This one was done in Keynote, just the stop motion animation that I shared with you moments ago, and so you can see what that artwork looks like. Um, a couple more. This one is frame by frame picture. So a camera on a tripod, we had a plastic sack literally taped to the hand and you can't see the hand that's actually pulling that bag around. It's cut out of the frame, right? But when you slide it together in what 150 frames, you get 12 seconds of animation and you saw that with the uh, transformer well you can do it with images okay and so you can see all of this was done on keynote even the animation that you're seeing there through the use of a really cool tool called magic move i'm going to superficially explain that here in the last few seconds of this presentation um, just because i want you to become aware with magic move and another really cool keynote application to play with. And then this one's about the refugee migrant um, migration over the Mediterranean. And this one actually has the sighting in it as well as some anim some audio that you can hear over it. So I'm gonna share how that thing is spun around. I apologize, I'm talking over, over that, but you can see that. And that uh, Okay, and I'll let that first part play again. All right, so I'm going to share these two things with you and then we'll get to some questions, okay? I'm sure, well, you may have some, you may not. I may have just confused the heck out of you, right? Okay, so let's pull up um, this one. What I want to share with you is that thing that was moving around was just an infographic created on Canva from canva.com. So then they moved it around kind of like if you're familiar with Prezi and then used what's called magic move. So this and this are the same slide, except this is just turned. So I took this and rotated it. And so when I click, when I get to here and I hit 
preview, you can see how that then turns. So that's all that that does. And so you can see how she was just maneuvering that. I'll explain that a little bit more depth right here. Um, so if we have two dots right here, I'll copy and paste this slide. I think that's so what makes more sense. Copy and paste. I'm on the second slide. I'll take this and put it right inside here. Now I'll come to my first slide and I'll go to animation. And in here, this is where you'll add the magic move type of animation. And so it, it plugs it in between these two and I hit preview. I realize this is a very superficial explanation of magic move, but this is how you can get things to move seamlessly. It's just my attempt to um, make you become aware of it in this comprehensive, very superficial presentation. And then this last is the last one I wanted to share with you. It's the stop motion animation. Literally, they drew it once. Each one of these is a shape drawn with the pen tool with that organic edge. And similarly with this boat, I know the people were drawn with their iPad, Keynote and iPad together. And this works seamlessly together. So when you go from one slide to another, you just rotate these around a little bit. Okay, go to the next one. And then as you go through each slide, then they maneuver ever so slightly. And then we just export that the same way we would an animated GIF or GIF rather. So this one's not using magic move, the other one was. And so they created two animations and then created a video out of that. So uh, again, not, uh, kind of meant to confuse you these last parts here, uh, mainly because I wanted to just expose those tools to you, even though I didn't really get a chance to share them. All right, it's 1.55, assuming we're going all the way to the bell at two. Do we have any questions? Can I chime in? And I'm just gonna get to these um, here. Links are visible on Whova chat. Thanks, Josh, for the tip. I'll try keynote animations with the students. Awesome job, Josh, keep it up. Can this whole animation thing be done on Microsoft PowerPoint? I can't answer the question with the PowerPoint. Um, a, a quick Google search if you just went to, um, if you just asked it, I'm sure it would uh, ask that or give you that information. One tip if you're using Google Slide, you have to add an add-on to the Google Slide to export it. It's called Creator Studio. And um, that allows you to animate the slide deck for a GIF in a, in a Google Slide. So it's called Creator Studio. Is iJack allow for multiple image triggers? Absolutely. So you could see in my device, I had multiple images. And so I can assign uh, any animation to any image. I, I wonder if that answers your question or not. The app is free. Everything that I've shared with you today is 100% free. Gotcha, Nomer. Okay, 10 minute warning. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel, five minute warning. Okay, is Magic Move a plugin? No, it's not a plugin. It is just automatically on there. And so you can see how, as I mentioned in the beginning, we could really spend 10 more workshops just talking about now Magic Move. And there's already a lot of amazing things out there, which is why I just did a superficial, hey, this is what this is, be, because there's so many awesome things out there. In fact, I'll even curate two of my favorite people and uh, that have amazing tutorials on not only creating artwork in Keynote, but then also creating animations using the magic move. And I'll put them in the chat and I'll confirm with Daniel uh, as well that I'm providing those services, uh, those at the appropriate place. Daniel, I see you're popping up. Are you in, uh, interrupting here? No, not, not yet. We still got a couple of minutes, but uh, I saw another question there from Din who, or another statement that said that they design a lot of posters for their class and definitely will try it out. A lot of people are super happy with uh, your presentation today, Josh. Uh, you, I think we could have listened to you for another hour and, and been pretty amazed at what you have been able to do. This uh, information, this um, conversation can continue on with the Whova app uh, through our conference app, but we'd love to hear more. Uh, you probably will leave here with a lot more questions to ask. And we want to thank Josh at the moment right now, if you can all just come on and give him a round of applause and 
did a great job of introducing AR and what tools he uses and what his kids are capable of doing. So I see some hands clapping up there. So that thank you so much for that. Um, any Can last minute words? Yeah. I want to plug in two things. Someone was mentioning something for a Windows application. So Keynote is free, just like an Adobe account is free. So you just create an Apple account and then you'll have Keynote application for you. But also for those Windows PC users, Google Slide is also something that is something that you can use. And so this isn't definitely an agnostic uh, presentation. You can use any device. Uh, I just choose Keynote because I'm a fan of the pen tool. And I'm also a fan of the magic move animation. Um, but if that's not your cup of tea, I think you can use uh, a lot of other, uh, a lot of uh, any other slide deck presentation. Um, and I would recommend anyone starting out to use uh, your thing for younger students. I used Keynote and iJack. That's it. That's a great place to start for anyone. Start small, go big. Let let them construct their own learning. And that's if you do what I shared with you today. Um, that's what ends up happening. Wonderful, Josh. Thank you so much. Thank you all for attending this wonderful presentation. Again, this recording will be up on our conference app. So if you'd like to go back and actually take a look or share that with other people around the world, what a great session, Josh. Super happy for, to have you as part of the VTC conference. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. You guys be well. Let me know if you all need right. anything else. All right. I'm available. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everyone. Josh, that was awesome. Well done. So impressed. Cool, cool. Um, anything else you need from me? No. No, I've uh, been tweeting you out this whole session. And uh, yeah, let's just stay in touch. You're doing some great stuff. So thank you. Oh, All right. Okay. Bye. All right. Take thank care. Bye-bye.